Good afternoon. I'm Rick Fields, and I am the program associate for the Bio and Ag Engineering Department here at the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture Cooperative Extension Service. And today I would like to share with you a project that I developed with Dr. Carl Van Devender, who is an extension engineer here in our department. Uh, the project is entitled Exploring Interactions Between Agricultural Decisions and Greenhouse Gas Emissions Using Swine Production. Now, I know that's a mouthful, but we wanted to do justice to the content, and believe me, it was a feat just to get it that short. Uh, many of today's high school students have very little insight into the basic daily operational decisions and challenges faced by agricultural producers. Uh, particularly in the urban areas, if you were to ask a youth where their food comes from, uh, many will give you the name of a grocery store or a restaurant chain. Uh, therefore, there's a need for the development of ag-centric and dynamic educational materials that can help to bridge the disconnect between these young people and ag production. Now, this project presents a dynamic lab activity with focal points on Arkansas swine production systems and the related greenhouse gas emissions. It was developed as part of a larger NIFA project, which builds on the existing work of the University of Arkansas and National Pork Board with their carbon footprint model to produce a systems-based analysis and decision support tool for on-farm use, education, and policy support. Uh, now, prior to the development of this activity, Carl and I, we set two clear goals for this project. Firstly, we wanted to educate students within our state about the management decisions that are intrinsic to swine production here in Arkansas. And secondly, we wanted to provide students with insight into the management obstacles that Arkansas swine producers are challenged with, such as uh, balancing economic resources, natural resources, carbon footprint goals, and often legal compliance. Uh, as you all know, the kicker here is that our producers must perform these tasks with minimal negative impacts on production and or profitability. Uh, now, because we set out to accomplish so much with this project, we did recognize that this information would be best digested by our audience if we broke it into smaller chunks. Uh, we all know that the best way to eat an elephant is, of course, one bite at a time. So. We broke the content into two sections, a part one and a part two. Uh, part one is designed to introduce students to the basic concepts of swine production and the practices common here in Arkansas. Uh, the main objective being to familiarize students with basic swine production principles in a way that encourages information retention. Uh, appropriately, this information is very general, and because of the general nature, it can be utilized as either a standalone activity or as a preparatory mechanism for the completion of part two. Now, part two of the activity is more technical, as it focuses on engaging these students through critical thinking and problem solving. Uh, part two appropriately contains more detailed and extensive resource information as it explores the subject matter in greater depth and then requires the students to apply their knowledge of the subject matter through a scenario-based decision-making. Uh, so in a nutshell, part one introduces the subject matter and walks students through the basics to reinforce their learning experience. And part two builds upon a knowledge base that is either pre-existing or created through implementing part one and then allow students to apply this information in a practical application by completing a scenario-based decision exercise. Uh, now, due to time constraints, I've elected to use this time to highlight the part one activity. But first, I'll discuss our delivery mechanisms. Uh, we elected to enlist virtual resources to help disseminate these activities. Downloadable PDF documents will be uploaded onto our extension servers, and these files will be linked to by sites administered by our partners at eExtension. Uh, we are also partnering with Arkansas Farm Bureau to distribute these materials throughout the state via their Ag in the Classroom program. Now, this program aims to reacquaint youth 
with Ag Roots through Ag Related Curriculum. And our hope is to have these activities adopted into current classrooms within the high schools across the state. Uh, this is possible due to our activity satisfaction of various Arkansas Department of Education curricular flame, curriculum frameworks. Uh, we are currently delivering our materials to Arkansas Farm Bureau and developing the infrastructure to support our online delivery, which we plan to have in place in early 2015. So keeping in mind that this activity is designed to introduce students to basic concepts, this work is a compilation of swine production reference materials, including uh, definitions that use layman terms, summaries of basic ideas, and practices that are native to swine production, as well as basic dynamics of greenhouse gases as they relate to the scope of this activity. Now, as mentioned earlier, this activity serves dual roles as it can be both a standalone introduction to the subject matter as well as a guide which can lay the foundation for students who are tasked with uh, the completion of part two. Now part one consists of five components, resource information, farm management system graphics, farm flashcards, a lab report form, and also the farm management option guide. Now, one note that I would like to make is that for simplicity, I will use the housing management system and all of the examples during this presentation and hopefully give an overview of this activity while uh, minimizing any confusion. Now, the resource information provides the backdrop for the students by introducing them to these topics on a very general level. It uses brief overviews of greenhouse gases, a glossary of common swine terms, and also contains a section which outlines three swine management system categories. Now these categories are housing management, feed management, and manure management. The three management systems are the result of our attempt to generalize, break down, and categorize the different functions and features of a swine farm. And basically, we encapsulated what we identified as the most salient activities and features and then assigned them to one of these three management systems. Now, each management system is designated a section which contains a summary of that system. Now, that's, that summary discusses the system's purpose and role in a larger system as well as listing common components that make up that giving system. For example, you can see here on the screen that the housing management system includes things such as lighting sources, heating energy source, and barn insulation material. So stepping back, again, the resource information is purposed to introduce concepts found within this activity, and the exercise then reinforces that information. The farm management graphics are simply graphical renderings of some of the universal components found within a respective management system. In this example, we see the housing management system graphic, which again includes such things as lighting sources, heating energy sources, and barn insulation material. Now, these are necessities that are commonly found in most barns, and these graphics are provided for a visual reference to the content that is discussed in the aforementioned resource information and also the farm flashcards. So what these graphics do is they serve as a, a spatial aid to help the students see how the individual components fit together to make up each system. Now the farm flashcards, they combine the graphics and the resource information as each part contains a functional description and a graphic for a given component or piece of equipment, which as you recall are the building blocks of each management system. Here we have the card featuring barn insulation material with an R value of 25, which again is from the housing management system. As you can see, this card provides very general information about what barn insulation is, its role in housing management system, and, and then it briefly describes how barn insulation decisions can impact the farm's carbon footprint and finances. So remember these components featured in the flashcards are the same ones 
that are labeled in the farm management system graphics and discussed in the resource information section. Uh, the lab report form, it serves as our what did you learn portion of the activity. Uh, the form features questions including what management system does the flashcard belong to? Also, what is the function of this card's component or piece of equipment? Now, this report is completed by the students within each group, either individually or as a collaborative effort, and done with the use of the farm flashcards, which would have been respectively drawn from a deck and retained by each student. Now, the purpose of this form is to give the students an opportunity to demonstrate their knowledge of the subject matter, as well as to reinforce what they learn through answering the structured questions. Now, completing this as a group effort ideally enhances its value because, as we know, peer discussion provides an opportunity for the youth to reinforce this material verbally, which, in effect, allows the kids to learn from each other. Now, the Farm Management Option Guide is a table which lists each of the management system options and contains a brief explanation of their immediate impact on the pig and the carbon footprint of the farm. Now, this table is a tool that is included to assist the instructors in leading a discussion about how the implementation of different management options will influence farm functionality, uh, financial resources, and even carbon footprints. So we don't recommend that this material be distributed to the students. All right, so now that I've talked about each of the components of the exercise, let's cover how this activity will be implemented within a classroom setting. So to begin the activity, the students will be separated into a group of four to five, and each group would be supplied with a complete deck of farm flashcards, all three farm management graphics, and the appropriate amount of lab reports. Uh, students would lay out the farm management graphics on their workstation and place the deck of farm flashcards beside it. Next, the students would take turns drawing from the deck, and after each card is pulled, it would be read aloud to the group and then visually matched with its counterpart on one of the farm management graphics. The card should then be retained by the student who drew it from the deck, and the draw match or draw read match process should continue until the deck of cards is exhausted. Now, once exhausted, the, the group should be prompted by an instructor to engage in a brief discussion about the uh, individual functions and the practical differences of each of the cards they possess. And next, they'll complete the lab report forms using the retained flashcards if necessary. Now, upon completion of the lab forms, the students participate in an instructor-led discussion of their answers to the lab forms. And then they submit those forms to the instructor for review. Now, this activity should be completed in a, a lab setting and covered over the course of two to five days, assuming that we have one hour of lab per day. Now, the resource information review should be done in the first one to two days, and then the activity would then be conducted in subsequent labs, with the entire process taking anywhere from two to six labs, depending on how the instructor chooses to cover the content and the lab time allotments. As far as results, it's, it's too early for us to share any impact or success stories, but what I can share is something that I was reminded of during the development of this project. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have the opportunity to run a trial of the initial version of the activity with the local high school classroom, and it was the feedback from this trial that actually spawned the creation of the part one portion of the activity, as originally there was just what is now known as part two. So after digesting the feedback that we received, we took a step back and we tried to assemble a proper introduction to what we had initially thought of as the introduction level material. So I'm sure what we experienced is, is not an uncommon occurrence when developing these types of educational materials, but I believe it speaks clearly to the value 
of developing educational products that can address fundamental concepts without overwhelming stu students with uh, details of, of various importance. Uh, thank you for your time and your attention.